I love to fish. My earliest memories were catching snack on Port Phillip Bay some 40 odd years ago. And today, I've turned that passion into a career. And it's the best job in the world. This is not for the faint hearted, I tell you. On the water, 200 days a year, I get to battle and film some of the biggest fish in the ocean and then share it in magazines and newspapers and TV shows around the world. Yes! But it's not all roses. I have to fish, rain, hail or shine. Oh my God, I'm wet, I'm freezing cold and I'm loving it! And take on the wildlife to produce the goods. There's only a million sharks in there, it should be right. You know what? I wouldn't have it any other way because there is nothing as exciting as getting up close and personal with big fish, especially when you do it from a trailer boat, a tinny, or even a kayak. Yep, got it. <laughs> Guy McGlashan. Better still, I get to do it with some of the best fish shows in the country. I'll tell you one thing, no other show goes to this length to catch a fish, and I'll guarantee that. So join me, Al McGlashan, on a fishing adventure like no other. Catching big fish from small boats. News travelled fast, but the tuna were finally on at Bermagiri. This is exactly what we've been waiting for. The Big Fish Small Boats crew wasted little time in hitching up the Evo and heading down the highway to chase some tuna. Crew for the day was Phil and Dave. Using the sea surface temperature charts, we hit the edge of the warm water and got the gear straight in. Typical of tuna fishing, it was hours of zeros. So we did one thing that always works, and that is prepare lunch. You know, and if there's one trick that always works, it's send Phil down there and get him to start making lunch. You'll get a bite. Gourmet muffins on the go here. A little bit of uh, tomato, cheese and ham in the pie oven. English muffins, note. Yes. Only the best. Just like catching carp. If nothing else, we're going to eat well. <laughs> All we need now is a fish. What's that tangle on? What's going on with all this gear always tangling all the time? It'll be the uh, inclement conditions. Striped tuna. It's a fish. <laughs> it is a fish. It's a fish. That's a good thing. <laughs> it's a fish. Oh, the others have been catching stripies in there too, so there's bluefin here. The stripies in the way at the moment. We'll just keep going, we'll keep catching, getting tangles, and eventually we'll find a fish. Now, we should offer one tip. You can see here, what Dave's doing is holding upside down. It seems to quiet them down a little bit. So if you get striped tuna and stuff, flip them over, hold them upside down, and generally like that, they'll be a little bit tired. Send him home, let's get an upgrade. Well, I tell you what, it's the end of a day and it's a frustrating one for us. This is day two down here at Bermagui and we've got absolutely zero. Now, a lot of fishing shows go out, they catch all these big fish. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't happen like that, especially when you do it yourself on your own trailer boat. So we came down, we put two full days in, we've got smashed, we've got wet and we've caught nothing. They've, they've had the odd fish. But what really adds insult to injury is the fact that the fish are now biting up the coast. So we literally drove past all the fish, came down here. The water we wanted to fish down here pushed back out that had been sitting out. It came in. As soon as we arrived, it pushed back out. So we missed the bite completely, and they're catching them back up the coast. All right, boys, let's get the gear in and go home. And remember, to get social with big fish small boats, check out the website bfsb.com.au. Follow us on Facebook, 
or watch all the episodes from past seasons on YouTube. And for the latest fishing reports and picks, check out Al McGlashan on Instagram. Coming up, we change locations. And I get tuna envy. With the water changing on the SST charts, we decided to relocate and headed to Jarvis Bay, chasing the bite again. This time, Sean Tracy from the Institute of Marine and Antarctic Studies joined us to get the last few tags out. <laughs> Things started slowly, so we put Phil to work again. Only this time, it was filling the pie oven with healthy pies. And wouldn't you know it, it worked again. Our commitment, I tell you, it's friggin' rough as out here and never looks rough on camera, but believe me, it's rough. Well, we have a beautiful striped tuna. There we go. Look at that. Magic. At least it's a fish. <laughs> now we're called Big Fish Bait Catchers. It's only mine. Well, I tell you what, they often reckon I've got the best job in the world, but I tell you what, it's also bloody tough at times. And today's another one of those. We fished down south of Bermagui, the fish were on, we raced down there. Missed the bite, did two hard days fishing. Then we've turned around, the fish are on up here. Randall and the boys caught them out at JB, so we raced straight up, you know. Came in for a fishing, packed everything, pulled in the boat, raced straight up here, and we get another rough day. But Randall has hooked up down below us, and this whole season's been a bit of a bit of us chasing our tail. You know, we've we've raced down there, the fish are on, missed them, raced back up because the fish are on, then they're back on down there. So it's, it's been frustrating. Probably the 14 odd years I've been in Sydney chasing tuna, this has probably been my toughest season. Thought we had a bite, but it looks like a false alarm. I hate tuna sometimes. I hate the bloody things. Bite, you bastards, bite! Well, with the light disappearing, we headed in. And we're greeted at the wharf with the X-rated crew who had just weighed a beautiful 126 kilo tuna. Seeing a tuna like this made me rethink twice about our plans tomorrow. That's it, I'm convinced I'm going fishing again tomorrow. <laughs> Meant to be going back for work, but not now. So that's it, we've got to go tomorrow. We can't not go, if that's motivation enough. Except the only thing is, how do we go and tag that thing? Let's, let's, I'll tell you what, let's catch one and then we'll worry about we'll the worry rest of it. So frustrating, isn't it? It's so close that, oh, just so close. I just want to get one of these damn things. Back at the boat, I sat down with Sean and we had a chat about big fish small boats and the role we've played in his bluefin tagging program. Let's go to a case study with these fish. You've had them do some pretty cool things. What's, what's one that, obviously one that we tagged on big fish small boats. What did it do that you just sort of, you just looked and went, oh, that's pretty cool information. Yeah, well, one of the cool ones was um, from 2012, the first year we did it. Uh, basically, we tagged it off Bermagui. It swam up the coast, basically, as, as you'd expect, as you guys see them, you know, you're often yeah, yeah. following them up the coast. Um, it's got up well past Sydney, and then it's basically beeline back out to the southeast, right out into the Tasman Sea. And um, we were actually able to look at some of the satellite sea surface temperature yeah. at that time, and where it's popped off, which is a, a very accurate, almost GPS-like mark. Ah, and that's because now, correct me if I'm wrong, being the scientist that I am, because the GPS doesn't work underwater, it has to be above the water to work. So Basically, it so, yeah, it's satellite positioning, it's but, but yeah, yeah, different yeah, technology. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he believes me. Yeah, but it's, it's popped off right in a uh, warm water tongue. So that was quite an interesting thing. You look at the sea surface temperature maps and where this thing popped off, and it just shows that they're obviously really favouring those sort of, you know, distinct edges of, of um, warmer water. And you know what? Maybe that's something we can use when we get back out there again for one more day, because we're going back. We're not going home with a, with a failure. We are going to go and get one more of these fish. Wait, me too. I haven't <laughs> given up on you yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we get it. But normally when we've done it, we've looked for the cooler water. You know, we've chased the cooler water. This year, we're looking for the hot water. It's 
the water cooled down so quickly, it's literally, it's the other way around. We're going, give me some cool water, you know, some hot, little hot patches. So if we find a hot patch tomorrow or today, it's that early, it's that late, I can't even tell what time it is anymore, we'll be able to get them, right? Yep, well, that's the, that's the plan, and that's one of the great things that keeps us coming back as fishermen, isn't it? If, you know, it's not the same thing every year. You've got to work out the puzzle, and you know, this year the it's puzzle's like a bit different. One of it. You lose one of the bits. You have to go and find another bit to put in that there. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. So right. hopefully we get on to them tomorrow, Al. Bring it on. We're going to catch one, trust me. All right, let's or go today. The New South Wales South Coast is an aquatic playground, especially for fishermen. There are ample towns with great launching facilities, and best of all, the continental shelf swings in close, which means even trailer boats can reach that deep water and big fish. Coming up, hours of boredom turns into minutes of mayhem, and it's a three-way. After seeing X Raiders 126 kilo fish the night before, it spurred us on to get back out there for one last shot. This time Phil bailed for work and was quickly replaced game fishing guru Daryl. Don't let anyone fool you that you just go and catch these fish on this, these TV shows, on these fishing shows, I tell you. We're putting in some hard miles, but it's looking good today. I think it's day 472. Maybe not that many, but we're out here, probably 35 miles JB to Halladala, probably closer to Bateman's at the moment. Water temp's gone up, it's now flicking 17.8. High sound, and my Furuno's probably about three points under, so that's 18 degrees, number one for bluefin. Now, you saw that huge fish that Randall caught the other day. In a day, that water's moved, and that was in close in 500 fathoms. Not our luck today. Today, it's 35 miles out, and it's in, I reckon, Three and a half thousand, three thousand fathoms, two and a half thousand fathoms, something like that. Put it this way, I'm not going to be able to touch the bottom, but the bluefin like it. We're going to catch one. And this is the problem with these bluefin. Down in Victoria and Tassie, you find the birds, you find the fish. Up here, it's a needle and a haystack. We just drive around, hoping to see them on the sounder. Even better, just hope the rods go off. You rarely see them on top much for some reason. We don't know why. I wish they did. It'd make it a lot easier to find them. <sighs> Come on. Seven hours trolling, still zeros. But one of the other guys hooked up, so we've got some promise. He hooked up outside us with one of those old blue water squidgies, the old Shimano ones. I don't even make them anymore. And I dug one up, and I've chucked it out. Hopefully, hopefully. Finally we were on, but it wasn't just one. Instead, all three Tiagras were screaming. That was this. We've been sitting there, and this has gone on. I'm pretty sure that we are up to day... I've lost count of the days. It's just been going on and on and on, and it's just so frustrating. And we're on our way in, and a couple of boats are booked up. 
We've got what, three on at the moment. Okay, I'll move this one. Hang on a sec, you're all right. This is the chaos that you have to deal with. Look at this. All right, hang on a sec, I'll just watch. I'm gonna put this one in that rod holder next to you there. Yep, come around. Come around, that's it. So we're gonna pull him in through the door. With the first tuna on board, Sean went to work and then soon had it swimming away with a $5,000 tag attached. Make yourself the complete angler by winning the ultimate fishing prize. A Bluefin Drifter 3.8 with front casting deck and full floor. Sitting pretty on a Dumbia trailer. Powered by a two stroke 15 horsepower outboard motor. And better still, there's $2,000 worth of awesome Shimano fishing gear to get you hooked up to that big fish out of a small boat. Plus there's an inshore safety equipment kit and comprehensive boat insurance with the boys at Club Marine. And it's all registered. That's $10,000 worth of prizes. And it's easy to enter. Just buy any product from The Complete Angler for your chance to win. And for full terms and conditions, visit completeangler.com.au. The Complete Angler, supplying fishermen with the complete fishing experience since 1967. Coming up, we still have two fish to go. Daryl decides to test out his rugby skills, wrestling the tuna. You want a hand or are you guys good? I can't see under the mat. Pulling the mat down for you. Yep, yep, that's it. Thanks, Jerry. Is that a fish? All right. This may, look... All right yeah, yeah. this may look a little bit brutal, but I tell you, it's just hooking them through a jaw. So it's like our jaw. There's nothing there. It's a little scratch. And you can see there's a bit of blood, but it's not a problem at all. It's all good. Woohoo! I can't say how excited I get when I do this stuff. So we go for the blood sample and the lateral so line. the blood sample now. Southern bluefin tuna are actually partially warm blooded and will heat up during the fight. Yeah, no, you push, mate, push. Yep. Up a sec. Come here. Come out the way. Hey, Daryl, I've got good news and I've got bad news. Good news is I'm going to go and film it from underwater. The bad news is, can you just hold that for me and just see if you can find that fish? <laughs> I'll go and jump in. We'll shoot some underwater and show you how cool these things are in the water. While Sean got the last tag ready to go, I decided to bail and jump in for a new perspective. Got him. With the fish on the leader, the hook suddenly pulled, but that didn't stop Daryl, who grabbed the fish in a bear hug and hauled it on board. <laughs> no. Not 
want to try and hold his yeah. tail a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you help me. You ready? Here we go. Oh, man. That's insane. Oh, they are so beautiful in the water. Absolutely awesome. We got it done. We did it. We went bloody hard, but we got it done. I need a beer. I need two beers. Well, finally, I've got my breath back. Now that we're on dry land. And what a mission it's been. We went north, we went south. We really worked hard for those tuna. But you know what? If you put in the yards, eventually it'll work. And the best part is, they're out there now with the final satellite tags in, and they're gonna show us what's going on so we can manage this stock better. And that brings me to three tips, thanks to Club Marine Magazine, they're gonna help you catch more fish. First and foremost, you have to get out there and just do it, as we did. And I say this over and over again, don't make excuses, just keep going. Put in an extra day. Secondly, get the crew motivated. You lose motivation when it's tough, but if you keep on your game, you will catch the fish. And finally, let a few go, because that way we'll have more bluefin in the future.